to uh, start up a Yamada. Uh, it's a 198F, which is not the same as a 192 or a 195. Okay, they're thinking everybody's telling me they are, but they're not because I've already found the fuel injectors aren't the same and the fuel pump is not the same. Uh, so if you need a fuel pump or fuel injector, get specifically one that matches yours. I mean, you have to take yours out and take it there and show it to them uh, and get the right one. But this video is about uh, fuel pumps and fuel injectors on these guys. So I already got one running here. This bad boy, I've got three of these. And uh, uh, it took a, a couple of easier steps. I kind of went the long route in figuring out what needed to be done, but we got it done. So we're going to do it the, the short version here where we uh, take this here. We're down here under the fuel tank and this is the fuel pump right there. That guy right there is the fuel pump. And there is a fuel filter here that goes here, but because like I said, this has been setting for almost two years, uh, I took the fuel filter out and drained it, drained all the fuel lines and everything, drained the fuel tanks. You can see it's op open and dripping a little bit here. So I'm gonna close it now just so I don't put fuel in there with, with, that, uh, with the fuel filter off. But what the first check you need to do when you do when you restart it or you try to start it and it won't start that's basically what we did we tried to start this one and it wouldn't start we tried to start that one and it wouldn't start and we tried to start that one and it wouldn't start that one they sold me the wrong part and actually damaged the uh, block uh, so again beware 198f is a 198f it ain't a 195 and it ain't a 192 and it ain't a 190 anything else it's a 198 and the parts are for a 198 so beware because they'll try to sell you a fuel pump. Where's the fuel pump at? Right here? Yeah, this one here. And if you read on it, on this little label here, if you can see that, it says 190 something. I can't read it. I don't have my glasses on, but I think it says 192, 195. So that's what you don't want. And the reason is because see this little thing with the ball hanging upside down? and a pointed thing on the top, that's too long. And that is your fuel control. Let me, let me put this down and I'll kind of give you a better idea. See this guy here? This is your fuel control. This controls how much fuel this thing pumps. Uh, this moves here and it moves here. The problem with this, from here, this distance to here is too long and this bottom here drags on the block inside of that hole and it won't move properly. Because what moves this back and forth is actually your governor or your throttle. They call it a governor. I call it a throttle. So it's this here. As this goes up and down, there's a little fork thing inside the block that moves like this. And that fork thing goes on here. So as it moves this way and this way, it uh, tells the fuel pump to either pump more fuel or pump less fuel. It's kind of just as like a little meat eatering valve. Um, in there that lets more fuel go or less fuel go. You can try to okay, so we are going to go from over here and this engine that actually has all this stuff on it uh, already screwed in that we're not going to undo and we're going to go over to here where we actually have the fuel pump out and the fuel pump again is a simple little thing like that. See this is gray the correct one is probably black uh, and I don't know if these are aftermarket or you know who actually makes these for your mod but this again is for like a 192 195 engine this is a 198 f see that so beware so what like i said this fuel pump slides into here like that like that and this little thing here goes between and look in that hole there and you see nothing right now right but as I move this up and down, all of a sudden you see that little fork thing go back and forth. You see it right there? That fork is what slides onto this, and this is your throttle. As you go up, it goes faster, and as you go down, it goes slower. 
as you go up it goes faster see it moving over to the right and as you go down it goes left so left and right so also beware that when you put this in you need to kind of what I do is center that in the thing and then there's a little uh, screw thing that you can screw in here a little uh, this little thing it comes with it here see this guy here and this actually screws into uh, here right here and you can adjust your throttle to a fixed spot here so if you because these are pump mode there's uh, in the Philippines you, you know the boats are called pump boats and the reason they're called pump boats is because they use water pump farm engines that pump irrigation water that's what these originally were they're kind of now become more of a marine type and that's what this is this is an actual marine adaptation of a water pump of a thing you would connect a, a, a pump to and pump your rice fields full of water or drain them or whatever you're going to do with your rice field so anyway um, these are pump motors uh, and uh, so if you're pumping you probably want to set your throttle to a certain speed and have it just run and either pump water into your field or out so that's why this is here and you can adjust it like that uh, over here is a cable for an actual throttle control which i bought and this is going to be really slick because nobody that has a pump boat has one of these but i went out on lazada and picked up sorry for my finger I'm having to work on the floor here and camera and everything look at this bad boy here see that throttle control for what for a lawnmower on Lazard and once and if I just take this thing out completely because I don't want it to get stuck and then you run this cable this end of the cable but right here through this all right there and down through there we'll go through and then it'll go through go ahead and put it through there through that and there and it's kind of bent up because I've been pushing it through there before and then you take a set screw and you put in this hole and you clamp it down on there and then as you move your throttle control here it raises this up and down up and down and you go fast and slow and it's got a little rabbit, no, a turtle there, so that's slow. So I got it backwards. That's okay, so it goes like this, like that. And you put that on your boat, and you got like a speed control, just like a real boat. Fancy, huh? But it's a lawnmower control, and it's not much. It's a couple hundred pesos on, you know, Lazada. And you can get different length cables, too. You can order them with different lengths, or you can order the cable by itself. So anyway, that's we're off on another tangent there, but I wanted to show you that because that's that's the cool way to run it. Otherwise, what they do, they take a fishing line, they take a some fishing line and tie it to this guy, and maybe they run through that hole. I don't know. I've seen it on the gas engines with the carburetor. Of course, this has fuel injection, and the way you control the fuel injection is really with the fuel pump here. Uh, and they got a fishing line and they pull it with their finger back and forth but you're always you know you're bouncing on waves and it's going fast and slow and that's just kind of erratic way to do things so uh, I saw that and thought I'm gonna give it a shot and it works it works great so anyway back to this so anyway you you can adjust your throttle control with this to get this in the center See right there, we got to get the flashlight over here so we can see in the center. And then you adjust this here in the center right there and right there. And then you drop your fuel pump and you center this too. Here, see this little slot on the top here, this little slot? That's a sight glass. And that's so you can see that throttle, that fuel pump, fuel control arm there through there and you can tell that you're sliding it into that fork you can center it because you can move this 
around. You can move it all the way to the left, you can move it all the way to do the right, or you could center it, which is basically where you're going to put it when you're going to insert it and put it in here like that. And uh, then that'll be, and then you can watch it through that side hole and make sure that you got everything lined up with the fork uh, with this uh, little pin here, this metering arm going through that fork. Also, these shims here are very important. You see the shim? This adjusts the timing of the fuel pump. So however thick or thin these are, uh, starts your pump pumping sooner, or if it's more thin, it starts pumping sooner. And if it's thicker, it starts pumping later. And if you're at higher altitudes, 5,000 feet or so, you want a thinner one of these. Uh, if you're at sea level, level, then probably the one that they ship you with the you know, unit is the appropriate one. But you can tell somehow, and I don't really know how to tell, but uh, it, if it starts smoking more or less, uh, then you can adjust it, uh, the fuel timing. And again, you have to check with somebody else on YouTube to figure out how to do that. But I'm going to go back to, now that I've kind of shown you the fuel pump, the metering uh, arm, how to remove it, and how to reinstall it, getting your forks lined up and sliding it this in between the forks and the fact that there's right ones and wrong ones and 192s and 195s aren't for 198s uh, so uh, we'll go back over here and we will get busy with this one here so the first thing that I do after storage is I've got to drain all the old diesel out I'm going to put a new fuel filter on here and then I'm going to put some gas in here. I'm not going to fill this tank up obviously because I don't need to for testing. But on the side here there's a little sight tube where as your gas goes up you can see it. This is your gas gauge here. So I'm just going to get the gas up to where I can see it. Maybe a quarter of an inch above the bottom line here where I can see it and that's enough for testing. So I'm going to do all that stuff. I'm going to put the fuel filter back on. And also these hose clamps here, they don't they're they they don't clamp the hose. They they look like they're clamping the hose, but they're not, and fuel leaks out from around the edges of all of these hoses here. It's just these clamps are just crap. So you're gonna have to get some, some screw on clamps. Like those. Stainless steel of course, with stainless steel everything. These are stainless steel straps, but they're not stainless steel nuts. So, those, and then again, this is an ocean going boat, so you want stainless steel everything. So, that's all I could get today, so that's what I got. So, we're halfway there with the straps, but not with the nuts and the little uh, housing that uh, the nut or the screw thing goes in to tighten it. So, I'm going to do that, and we're going to be back with more from my paradise on Bentayan Island. We're going to get the first, we're going to make sure this thing pumps. So we take this off after we do all the fuel stuff. We take this fuel line off that goes to the fuel injector. We take it off and then we uh, uh, crank it over. And this is an electric start. So see I got a battery there and I'll hook that up and you'll see me do that too. Um, and then we uh, crank it and see if this thing shoots out fuel. It should just go squirt, 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 squirt. It doesn't flow like a big flow. It's just squirt, 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 squirt for each revolution of the engine. It gives us a squirt for the next uh, firing of the piston. Okay, so we'll do that. And then if that pumps good, then we'll put this back on. And then we'll go over to the fuel injector over here. And we'll take this, this one off here. And then we'll kind of put it over here. We'll put some tissue or rags here or something. And then we'll crank it again and get the fuel, diesel fuel all the way in the line. And you'll see it doing the squirt, 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 squirt here. And then you know your line's got fuel in it and the air's out. Then we're going to disconnect the, uh, we're going to remove the fuel injector here. And I'm going to kind of bend this line out there. And I'm going to put the fuel injector on this line outside of the engine pointing out like that 
and again we're going to have some cloths or rags and then we're going to crank it again and you should see it going psh, 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 spraying like that and if that works then your fuel system is functioning then you put your fuel injector back and uh, all your hoses back uh, and then try to actually start it and see if it runs so we're going to do all those steps and uh, we'll be back with more from my paradise on Battalion Island. Also, this uh, engine has a muffler too, so that's nice. It's not just one of those bl blasting loud engines. A lot of the uh, pump motors you get don't even have it, it mufflers. They've got uh, just a straight pipe, usually gasoline. But this is a diesel and it's got a muffler. Not super quiet, but it's better than uh, that's a straight pipe. So we will be back with more from my paradise on Battalion Island. Bye for now. Right. We're back, and I'm just going to show you the fuel filter here. This is it here. It's got uh, an input here. It's got an output here, and this is a uh, air bubble, uh, or even a fuel return into the the tank. It goes around there and back back into the tank up up, up here at the top part. So uh, usually air is what's coming out of here and going back into the tank, and it's because you don't want air in any of this are in any of your lines uh, going in. I've also put the uh, these hose clamps on here, better hose clamps than those cheapy little clip ones that came on it. Yamada is a good engine, supposedly. I mean, I'll tell you after I run this thing for a couple of years, uh, but uh, their hose clamps are just, are just for crap. So you're gonna have to replace those. I don't have a little tiny one like this, and this is the air uh, vent for the uh, fuel fil filter so I'm not really too concerned about that hopefully that doesn't leak too badly and again you got my fuel off so I'm gonna re I'm gonna connect this up and then we'll be back with more from my paradise I'm Italian Island next we'll take this thing off well we'll fill the tank so somewhat and uh, take this off and then run it and you'll see that so we'll be back with more my paradise battalion island bye for hey now everybody. uh we got the fuel filter on we put the hose clamps on here because i got the right size one i got the right size hose clamp here but i don't have this little but like i said this is an air vent return and you can see a little bit of fuel in here we put fuel up to this line right around here you can kind of maybe you can see it maybe it's drained down some i don't know but we just put it up about a quarter inch above where it starts to show just for testing that's all that you need and now we're going to turn the petcock to on and you're going to see the fuel going into here and uh, see it filling up it's coming in from the tank filling up filling up now it's going up there it'll go up here to the level of that but we got to get the air out of this line here see this line here this is the fuel injector line so we got to get fuel running down into there over into there we gotta get that line fuel full is that line full can you see is that line full there's no air in there right huh oh no no there's a lot of air okay so we're trying to get the air into that line i don't know if you can see the bubble. well you can see them coming up on this side here do you see them coming up here bubbles that's coming out of the fuel injector line the line going to the fuel injector so as soon as that's 100 percent full of fuel and again i'm having to lift this fuel filter up to get it above there because it's kind of down below and there's a tiny bubble that just went back and that's no big deal you're okay if you just got a tiny one here but we really shouldn't have any bubbles here so this fuel here should be in there see there we go we're getting the air out of there getting the air out of the input line there we go see now it's going all back okay now we're 100 percent fuel see in the fuel filter uh, there's a little bubble on the input here i'm going to try to get that to kind of work its way through the system here you, you know air goes up so you got to kind of turn it upside down and stuff to get that air out but again that's a little bubble and it's on the input side so I'm going to live with that because we got fuel going everywhere else. Okay, so next step, now we got the filter full of fuel, all the lines full of fuel, and the air vent full of air going back. We are going to uh, take this off here, and that's a 17 millimeter wrench. 
So I just get this guy here, break it loose. And none of these things, you don't want to muscle these things down too tight uh, whenever you're working on these. Uh, because uh, it's like a compression fit thing and I guess you can kind of deform the where this pipe meets the uh, fuel pump so you know just be uh, wise when you're uh, taking this stuff off okay so there now that guy's off I'm gonna bend this out some here like that and now the top of the fuel injector is open and uh, we'll be able to watch the fuel shoot out of here whenever we uh, crank the engine. So that's our next step. So I'm going to get that all set up. I'm going to connect the uh, battery over here. I'll actually show you how to do that too. Uh, on this side, you have your electric starter, of course. Not all pump motors have electric starters. Uh, just a minute, i got to cut some tags off and I'll be All right, back. everybody, we're back and we're going to connect the battery. Now, you notice I've got three wires here on the battery. And I've got two here twisted together and going to the positive terminal. Here's positive, see right there, positive terminal. And then I've got one over here that's not twisted with those two. This one is like your ignition. So I'm going to show you where to touch this thing to to get the engine to start. And if you're not electrically minded, you know, you might not want to do this um, because uh, you could short things out and that wouldn't be a positive thing. And the other side has got a ground here. And I've got three wires here. I've got three wires because this is the wire that I had it's a multi-strand uh, heavier gauge wire but uh, I tried to do it with just one ground wire and it almost smoked it uh, just too much current going into this starter so I, I beefed it up with three wires and I there's a nut right here that goes into the into the head and so I just loosen this and I put that on there and then clamp it down there that's the ground and then the and don't let those touch because this battery is live. And what I also have is the hose clamps here around there and I just stuck the wire down in there and put the hose clamp on just like a temporary type of uh, you know connection here. So of course if you let negative and positive touch things explode okay. So don't do that. So under here your star hooder you've got your this is your power here this is where the th three wires or the, the heavy two wires go because uh, that's going to ultimately run the star herder and that's where all the current is so uh, you just kind of clamp this down on here you, you just kind of get this there's like some washers and stuff that you can use to kind of separate the nut from the wires so when you tighten it down it doesn't try to twist twist the wires out of there so this is going to be your power here that actually runs your starter. This little wire here is the one that's going to be like your key switch on your ignition. Now it, diesel engines don't have spark plugs. They don't have ignitions. They don't have any electric running them other than the starter if you have an electric start. That's it. There's no coils. There's no ignition. There's no distributor. There's nothing like that on these. Uh, uh, if you have a like an engine that it runs in cold climates, you may have glow plugs and some kind of, of of an ignition there, but not these. These are just pure compression, compression and fuel. Okay, so now I'm going to hook the ground wire up here, and again, don't let this wire touch anything, anything, because it's live, 12 volts. Let me my ratchet, you ratchet. Ratchet. So, and that's a 10 millimeter on this guy here. So, take him loose. And this, this little, this is like a little uh, air shield. 
it's got forced air cooling. So there's a fan in the front up here that blows air through here, through this, and, and out here. So, uh, you know, it's an air-cooled engine, not water-cooled. So, and then I'm going to just stick this, let's give this a little bit more. Give me a little wiggle room to put this wire behind the washer. And, uh... There it is. So I just wrapped it back there and I'm going to tighten this down some. Just kind of snug it. Again, we're not muscling anything on here. Good enough. Okay. So I'm going to uh, now pretend that I have a key switch. And this thing here. If all works. Oh, also you have a, a decompression lever on here too. This diesels are high compression engines, really high, and so they're really difficult to pull start because you have to compress gas so much that it gets so hot that it explodes without a spark. Uh, and so this is a decompression lever. So if you push that down, it opens a valve and just lets the engine kind of turn much more freely if you're going to pull start and so when you pull start with a rope uh, you push this down and then you pull it and it'll automatically after it cycles once or twice it'll pop back up and then you get your compression and then it'll start so it kind of gives you like a running start on spinning the engine up well we've got uh, a battery here with a starter here, so we don't have to worry about that. But we're going to watch that fuel shoot out of here if it's working properly. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do, see down here, do you see this little blade on this side? That's your starter switch, goes to there. So if I take this power from the positive and we got it grounded, we got the power to the starter, this is a uh, solenoid or like a relay that transfers this power over to here if I energize it with this. So I'm going to do that, but I'm just going to spin this engine and make that fuel pump out of there. So we're going to see what happens. The reason, the reason it's not pumping out is because we have it turned off. You have to, <laughs> if, if this fuel is off, the pump is off and that's that fork thing so when the fork this goes down that shuts the fuel off which turns off the engine on a regular a gas engine you turn off the electricity that makes sparks for the spark plugs that stops it but there's no spark plugs here so we're not going to get fuel until we tell it start pumping fuel so anything above stop here in this range from from uh, stop above there to uh, full throttle so that's when that fork thing moves and tells this guy to pump fuel okay so let's try it again so that's a good lesson there here we go again I'm touching that wire to there and it's gonna make noise and hopefully it'll squirt oil I need to get back <laughs> That squirted fuel. That means that the fuel pump works. And now we need to get all the air out of this fuel line here. So the next thing we do is I'm going to clean up this fuel that it shot on the floor. And then we'll be back and do the next step. So we'll be back with more from My Paradise on Italian Island. Bye for now. So we put the uh, the fuel line here. Where am I at? Right here. Back onto the, the fuel pump. Now we're going to take the fuel line off of the fuel injector here and uh, that's a quickie about uh, 17 millimeters oh I got it right here right here oops I got my hand on the speaker thing so here we go so now we're going to take this off of here so this just goes on here and I'll let my wife hold the camera I don't know what that thing's doing but yeah here we go that just comes loose it's just a little snap at the beginning and then this comes off and over here now i'm going to kind of bend it out over here 
for now. I'm going to put some tissue under here so it doesn't make a big mess. And we're going to do the exact same thing until fuel starts squirting out here onto this cloth. Onto that cloth right there. So we're going to do that. Okay, she's going to hold that and you're going to get to see the fuel squirt right out. When it squirts out, that means it's filling this line with fuel. So it, it'll take a few uh, cycles of the engine to uh, before you start seeing it squirt on this tissue. Here we go. See, this is all wet now with fuel so now this line is full of fuel the next thing we're going to do because we don't know the condition of this fuel injector we're going to take this fuel injector out and we're going to uh, uh, see if it's it's squirting uh, fuel so we'll take it out of the engine I'm going to take these off it's just two screws on on the side and again when you put this stuff back in don't muscle it down just snug it down and you're good I'm going to move my tissue out of the way, and I need my uh, pliers okay, so to get this. I, I removed this hose, got this little goofy clamp, and again, these clamps aren't no good, uh, but I can't find a little small screw uh, stainless steel screw one f for that. But there's two bolts here, like this, uh, that come out, and then you'll notice that the fuel injector actually doesn't, these tabs are above here there's a, a air gap between here and the block or here and the head so uh, don't worry about that when the fuel when the fuel injector goes inside there it sets on this silver ring the edge of this silver ring right where my little finger is right there so this is your fuel injector and you can see it's ran before because it's got the carbon on the tip there because we started this when it was new they started it at Phil Ann where uh, it originally came from of course they started at the factory they started at Phil Ann and then they started it at the place where I bought it here on Bentayan Island so we're going to connect this up to the fuel line we're going to bend, bend, bend out and then we're going to see if this thing if this nozzle here will spray properly and if it does then this thing should start and run so we'll be back with more from my paradise on Bentayan Island we're about to see a fuel injector nozzle spray diesel Okay, I now. have uh, gently, I repeat, gently bent this over here and out so that the fuel injector is now out here. It's mounted. It's mounted to the uh, fuel pump. And now we're going to see if this thing will spray. When it sprays, it sprays in, in about four ways out the side. Okay? So watch for this. And it's, it could get kind of messy. And I'm not trying to try not to get it on me and try not to get it uh, anywhere where <laughs> the sparks will fly in. So we will keep an eye on that injector and see what happens. Here we go. Did you see it spraying? It's working. Okay, so this fuel injector works. Everything's wor working uh, and looking good. And again, we shot diesel fuel everywhere, but that's what you want. A super fine mist like a fog coming out of four, like north, south, east, and west. Basically, the other thing you're going to find when you pull your injector out, there's maybe one or two little copper bushings in here. So you see this is a smooth side here, and you see this one here has kind of like a ring. The ring goes up. So when you're reinserting your fuel injector, uh, go ahead and put that in there with the ring. See that ring, that center ring thing going up and the smooth part going down. And if you have to drop it in, in there, be careful because it can flip and go upside down. And then you don't want that. You, you want to get it out and get it back in so it goes in straight uh, uh, properly with the top side up and the bottom smooth side down. So I'm going to disconnect all this, get this all back in there, and we'll be back and we'll try to start this bad boy. Bye for now. Another note you want to know about, I've got the fuel injector off of the line and we're getting ready to insert it, but do you see this little ball here? Do you see that little round ball? And you see this little half moon notch here? Well that round ball slides down there and that's the alignment for your fuel injector. Okay? And again, don't forget to put your uh, copper washers in there with the right side up. And I'm going to go do that and we'll be back with more from my paradise on Bentayan Island by for now also just so you you know you can replace this nozzle you have to 
see this here this is like a 16 point uh, socket uh, size here uh, or wrench size but it is a bear to get out uh, but you can put a, 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 a wrench on here like a, a wrench crescent wrench or regular wrench here and then you can put your uh, uh, open in uh, your, your box in wrench here or if you have it a deep socket you can put that on, on there and it'll come loose uh, right here you'll also notice that when you tighten it back down it doesn't go all the way up against this indented part there's a little gap there so don't think you got to muscle this thing all the way to where that gap is closed you don't that's not how it works it'll go until it's tight and you can't tighten it no more and you're done and again it's a little uh, tight it's really tight getting it off and when you put it back on I guess you want to put a similar amount of torque but you, you know use common sense and uh, you know don't <laughs> don't overdo anything and so I'm gonna drop this guy in after I put the bushing in and we'll be back with more from my paradise home in Tiny Island. Remember, this little ball bearing goes lined up with that little half moon notch. All Bye right. for now. Uh, I dropped it back in and what I did, you know, to, those bushings, uh, I put a little drop of oil between the bushings and the injector. And when I say a drop, I put one, I, I got my fingertip wet and put a little drop between them and that let the bushing stick to the bottom of the injector. I slid it on over the no no nozzle with that drop of oil between the uh, copper bushing and the in injector, and then I was able to drop it down in there with the bushing which stay stuck to the bottom of the in in injector. I'm tightening these guys down now, and you just walk them down left and right lightly. I'm just doing it by hand at first because uh, you don't want to get these all crooked. I mean, you don't want to tighten one side down, uh, and then the other side uh, is all like out of whack. So anyway, uh, just walk them down gently, each side. Uh, as you go, a little bit, a little bit, switch off from side to side, and uh, unt until it's uh, you, you know snug. So I did a one half a turn there. So a half turn there, come back here, do another half a turn. That's starting to get snug. That's starting to get snug. And you keep in mind that this is, there's an air gap between this plate that those two nuts is in and the head. See that? There's an air gap there. So you try to torque this thing down and you may crack this bracket here. So don't go nuts with anything. Just snug it up and you're good. Okay, now the trick is with these fuel lines, bend them slowly and bend them carefully. And don't try to make one bend, the whole bend in one area because they'll kink. And if you kink it, you're screwed because then it's going to crack. The other thing about these fuel lines is uh, carry a spare one because what this is the most common failure on diesel in engines is they're going to crack right in this area here or right on the fuel pump area uh, right above this nut somewhere. Uh, so uh, I actually bought a spare one, so I'm carrying that uh, with me when I go uh, out in my boat. Because I'll be out in the ocean. I'm going to be 20, 30, 50 miles, 100 miles from home. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I want to get back. <laughs> but i got three engines, too. So uh, the good news is uh, i got a good chance of getting back. So I'm going to uh, put this nozzle back on here. I'm going to bend it back over here. Whoops, and uh, I'll do that off camera, and we'll be back with more, uh, and then we'll start it, and we'll be back with more. My Paradise, Battalion Island, yeah, baby, this diesel is about to fire up. Another trick I'm going to show you here is, you know, I bent this uh, fuel line way out here to test the injector, and then you bend it back, well, it doesn't line up perfectly straight with the top of the injector no more, so you're going to have to do little minor tweaks. And what I do, I take my crescent wrench and I put it on here. You see how that, that is? And then I'll bend it and make a little tweak here. I'll go vertically, the same thing here. Where I go vertically and I'll bend it this way or this way uh, and that kind of thing. So your crescent wrench, you can do these final little tweaks to get this thing to just go straight in because you see this ring here on the inside? That uh, needs to go through this outer nut uh, in the center hole. That's part of the compression fitting. 
so if this is angled like this way or this way or this way or this way, you're gonna it's not gonna want to center that little ring inside of here, and you're gonna have a, you're gonna either not get it on or worst case you're gonna cross thread thinking you got it on and you're gonna get your wrench and start tightening this thing down and you're cross threading this and you really screwed it up because then either your nuts bad your fuel line or your injector threads are screwed up or everything is screwed up so anyway uh, we will be back with more so that's my little crescent wrench bending tip and you can use that anywhere. You can use that here, here, just to do. I wouldn't do, go like this. I usually line it up, coming, coming in, in from the bend here, coming in from the bend here, coming in from. I don't go straight down and twist because that'll kink your line right here and right here where the edges are. So you really want to get more of that uh, blade on the tube to make the tweak. So we are back in action here. We got everything uh, done, and uh, we're going to fire it up and see what happens. So uh, wish us luck. <laughs> so we're going to get over here, and I'm going to kind of, I don't know how we're going to do this. Uh, maybe I can set the camera up, prop it up. Yeah, I'll prop it up on this other engine so that you can kind of see what happens if I can get that camera to uh, pop up on that engine there oops that's not it that's not it so uh, right, so we got the throttle uh, adjusted on the other side to about a third of the way uh, throttle and we're going to try to start this thing and see what ha happens hopefully it starts so here we go. in the house so <laughs> we're not running it up too much because it smokes up the house but you saw it worked first first shot and we couldn't get any of these other engines to run at all first shot because we didn't do those steps those steps that I showed you that's the way to get it after your engine's been setting for a while just to go through that process uh, again, it's pretty quick. It's not as long as the video took because I'm talking a lot and stuff but you just take the fuel line well, you drain your tank. You know the steps. I'm not going to go through them again. But anyway, it worked. It ran. We conquered. And uh, we have another problem over on this one here. This is the first one where they sold us, the company place sold us the wrong injector or the wrong fuel pump. And uh, it wound up cracking uh, the block right, right in here. There's, a, there's cracks. I don't think you can see them because I don't have a light, but it cracked this bolt here and it cracked all the way across here because, yeah, see that crack? Get that back right there. You see that crack? Get that. You see that crack right there? Cracked across here. Ripped this bolt out because the injector was too long. Uh, it looked the same height, but they have a little roller lifter that slides on here. Uh, on the wrong one has the roller and but the roller adds about that much height overall to this and When the cam pushes it up. It just ripped this whole thing out of the uh, Out of the engine mount there and when it did it ripped that out of the ripped all the threads out of that hole uh, ripped the threads out of the screw the nut on this side uh, Didn't hurt this one, but this one is cracked this one's cracked from here all the way into the block over here so I got to find out about getting a new block uh, they've got them uh, here on Battalion Island they actually stock the blocks for this uh, and they're about 5,000 pesos so about a hundred bucks for a block and then of course you have to transfer all your innards in turn one of those over and you, you know just basically disassemble an engine and reassemble it into the new block uh, so I got a mechanic coming over tomorrow to tell me 
if he can somehow fix this and we can save this block and just somehow patch these holes. I don't know how, uh, but you know, Filipinos, they're resourceful. They don't want to spend the 5,000. So they figured out a way probably to get around this. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's a new block, but anyway, we're going to find out tomorrow how to do that. So beware, like I said, the 192 and the 195 parts do not fit the 198. So we will be back with more from my paradise on Italian Island. Don't let them sell you the wrong parts and flush, drain, and bleed all the air out of your fuel lines and test your fuel injector and your engine will probably start first time. Bye for now.